y'all. You back with Streets. Freestyle cooking with Streets. Thanks for tuning in. And like always, I hope everybody out there staying safe and healthy. And of course, y'all already know what it is. I got another great recipe to share with y'all. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Always appreciate the love. If this your first time on my channel, please hit that subscribe, like, share, and hit that notification bell so you can keep up with all the latest recipe videos, y'all. Alright, because right here, Freestyle Cooking with Streets, we get it in. You know how I do. Let's do it. Alright, so today, y'all, we're going to be doing some bison fillets and i got some giant prawns going on here right the real giant prawns look at these y'all look at those oh my goodness see all that meat got the giant prawns and i got some bison which is banging if you never had bison uh, it's not gamey some people think it's gamey you know bison is basically you know it tastes like steak you know what i'm saying you know, it's the cut of meat from a buffalo compared to steak coming from cattle, cow, whatever. You feel me? Bison's a lot more leaner than uh, steak. You feel me? Than regular beef. It's a lot leaner. You know what I'm saying? A lot of nutrient, less fat. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause it's really a good option when you really want to go like lean with your red meat. You feel me? You know, it's just like another little alternative, you know, to, to go a little bit more healthier in the red, you know, unless you just exclude red meat from your diet. This will, you know, you can go a little bit healthier, you know, get some good nutrients out of this. It's good to go, y'all. Y'all need to try it. Normally, you can find bison, you know, at your butcher shop, you know, that sells any type of, uh, like, you know, like the gaming protein, like venison, duck, goose, you know what I'm saying? You can find some bison, okay? So I got me some bison fillets. They already had them, like, wrapped up in some uh, butcher's twine. All right? So these is, like, the filet mignons, like the tenderloin. So I got me some bison tenderloins here. Like I said, like, it resembles the uh, filet mignon. So we're going to hook that up. I'm also going to do some uh, lacinato kale. You know, the dinosaur kale. Okay? And put together a little quick meal, man. I had to share it with y'all. You know what I mean? This is what I was in the mood for today. This is how we getting down. Let's do it. All right, y'all. So the first thing I want to do is we want to go ahead and season up our bison fillets. Get some salt on there. And you want to be kind of generous with the salt because these are like pretty thick fillets. Okay. Here's some pepper. And you can prepare bison similar to steak, y'all. Like, really, really, it's good. You need to try it. I mean, some people could tell, like, the little difference. You know, they have a, they could taste a little difference in the taste between the beef and bison. But to me, y'all, it's similar to steak. If you prepare it the same way, you like, you know, you prepare your favorite steak, you know, you'd be, you'd be, it'd be pretty good. But it's good, y'all. All right, let's flip these and season the other side. All right, y'all, and I'm also rubbing the, you know, the seasoning that's on the plate on the sides so, so I have it seasoned up all the way around, y'all, all the way around the board. Alright, so it's just some salt, pepper, garlic powder. That's it. We're ready to go. Let's get out my skillet. Alright, y'all. Got my skillet out. Now I want to get my skillet real hot because we're going to seal the fillets. Which is going to put a nice crust on it and seal all the juices. So when we finish it off in the oven, we're going to get it right, y'all. Alright, so we're going to cook it to the right temp. I'm going to use my... Uh, cooking thermometer to get it right but we're gonna put right now though we're gonna get the pan real hot and get a nice little sear on it all right right now i'm gonna add some of my beef tallow about his fat give me that extra beefy flavor going on you know y'all should try it out plus it's high heat hands with the high heat okay 
get that at your local uh, farmer's market or you could just use any kind of uh, high heat point oil you know what I'm saying uh, sunflower oil uh, coconut oil grapeseed oil whatever you got so you can get a nice good sear on there alright so we're gonna get our pan so it's just smoking alright y'all now that we got the pan smoking let's go oh yeah and that sizzle is exactly what you want to hear y'all talking about y'all give it a little press sound to make sure I get some good contact and you want to preheat your oven to 350 y'all so have your oven preheated to 350 all right and we're going to do these for like five minutes four to five minutes on each side for me it's been about five minutes let's do the first flip let's see oh yeah look at that y'all nice crust on that side Get that down just how we want it. Oh yeah, y'all. Crust is beautiful. Oh man, the crust is beautiful, y'all. Okay. And we're going to do it another five minutes on this side. And also, I'm going to sear the sides too. Okay. But I'm not going to sear them for as long. Just maybe like a minute or so. Just to get a little color on them. And then the whole skillet is going in the oven, y'all. Alright y'all, I got my probe in, okay, got it set to 155, that's where I want it, okay, so let's get it up in the oven y'all, let's do it. Alright y'all, there we go, got my bison up out the oven, right at the temp that I wanted, sort of to that medium well, that's where I'm at, alright, so now what I want to do is I want to let it rest, so... I'm going to go ahead and add some butter on top of each. Put like a nice little foil tent on top. And let that rest for about 10 minutes, y'all. Alright? So put, put that to the side. And let your, let your meat rest, okay? It's always important because you want all those juices to, to stay in there and stay incorporated. Which is the point of the uh, uh, serum, alright? Alright y'all, got another pan out because now we're about to work on our prawns. Alright, got our bison resting. Alright, let's get ready to do these prawns. Not going to take no time at all. Want to get your pan nice and hot. Okay, for this I'm going to use some, I got this uh, coconut oil with the non-dairy butter flavor. So good, I'm going to use this for my prawns with some butter. Okay, and I'm using this because I just don't want to use the butter by itself because I don't want the butter to burn. Right. And we just want to get this on the medium high. We don't need to have it blazing hot like this if we, if we were searing. After I got my oil in there, I want to drop in about a couple of tablespoons of butter. Alright, then I'm going to put my prawns in with the shells, y'all, because the shells... With the shells on, they're going to trap all that flavor in the prawns, y'all. They're going to trap it all, keep it up in there. Alright, so I'm going to season this with, I got my seafood creole seasoning. Okay. Also some garlic powder, some Old Bay seasoning, All right, and some black pepper. Alright y'all, and I just want to go ahead and cook these till they start to turn pink, you know what I'm saying? Couldn't take long but a couple minutes on each side, they're pretty thick, so it's not going to be like when you're cooking like your regular size prawns or jumbo shrimp. So it'll take a little longer. But at this medium high heat, I would say about three to five, like three to four minutes. Because then I'm going to add some stock 
to the pan and kind of poach them and let them poach in the stock. You feel me? You know, kind of let them boil in the stock. That way we make sure they cook all the way through. That's how we getting it down, y'all. Okay, y'all. Did my flip already. As you can see, look how they coming out. All right, so now I'm going to add some stock, some seafood stock I got here. All right. There we go, just about a quarter cup. Then I'm going to turn it down to low and put a cover on it and put it on low and just let it flow for a minute. All right, so we're going to work on our kale. Okay, y'all got my kale prepared, ready to go. I went ahead and moved my bison to the oven to keep it warm, okay, because it's been resting and I don't want it to go all the way cold. So I got it on warm, just chilling, still covered with aluminum foil, so it'll be nice and warm and juicy still. Got my kale clean, ready to go. You know, you see why they call it that dinosaur kale, because, you know, it got that bumpy-like skin flow going on. All right, and I also cut me up some shallots, some hot Fresno peppers, and some garlic. All right, so we're going to saute this, saute this up real quick and fast, some salt and pepper. Done. All right, y'all, got my all-in-one pot out that I love to use whenever I'm doing something real quick. Got my heat on, got to put it on medium high. Go ahead and get some olive oil in there. No, not a lot, maybe about a tablespoon. Not cooking a whole lot of kale. Real quick recipe. Alright, now that my, once my pan is heated, go ahead and get my shallots up in there. And we got it on a medium high, y'all. Alright. Stir them up for about 30 seconds, y'all. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and put my garlic in there. All right, I'll let that rock out for like another 30 seconds. The next, I wanna go ahead and drop my pepper, my fresh little peppers in, and my kale. All right. All right, and then the second, this will start to wilt down. So I'll just stir it around until it starts to wilt down, y'all. Hey, right, y'all, you see how it's starting to wilt down? All right. Now I want to add some salt and pepper. Just season the taste. Like I said, this is probably about a pound. Not a lot of kale. You know, if you're making a lot, if you're making some for like a whole family, you might have wanted to grab like three pounds. All right, but I just wanted a little bit just to go with my bison. All right, a couple more minutes, and we're done, y'all. All right, y'all. So now, right before we get to the plate up, I wanted to go ahead and get one of my bison's out. Oh yeah. And I want to go ahead and cut into it so y'all can see how good it looked. Let me get this butcher's twine cut off. We're going to go ahead, y'all. Let's cut into this, see what we got going on. Oh, yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Look at that, y'all. Look at that. Got that medium well texture that I want. Still juicy. Oh yeah, y'all. Alright, take a piece of this right now. Mmm. Tender. Oh my god. Y'all got to try it, y'all. Mm. Season just right. Because the bison is already flavorful. I can taste the butter. Got to put it on top. Love it. 
Let's get this thing on the plate, y'all. Alright, so first I'm going to go ahead and get my kale up on the plate. Just like so. So yeah, y'all. Add a little bit of olive oil. Next, I went ahead and added my shrimp. I went ahead and took the shell off. I mean, I cooked it in the shell so I could have all those flavors in the shell. I mean, I wanted the shell to trap all the flavor. You feel me? So I took off the shell, left the tail on. Boom. Got my bison on top of the kale. Uh, I got me some sriracha horseradish sauce, you know, to garnish with. Okay, and now I just want to finish it off with some green onions. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. Here we go. Boom. So there we go, y'all. We got our bison, our giant prawns. You feel me? Got the kale, the dinosaur kale, the lacinato kale. Oh, yeah, y'all. Got the horseradish sriracha sauce. That's what I'm talking about, y'all. This also goes good with, you know, you can make a, a bernet sauce. You know, for or any kind of sauce that you like to eat on steak. Good to go. Alright. So I'm about to go in on this, y'all. That one I cut open, tasted, I'm ready to go. Alright. So, please subscribe, like, share, hit that notification bell comment you know let me know what y'all think let me know if y'all tried it holla at me let me know what's good all right now i ain't gonna let this place sit no longer y'all y'all know how i do holla